Hey, you there. Thank you for watching and welcome to Forge Lines Forever. Today I have a 6v6 custom matcher on the most amazing Noroxus map generator. So let's go ahead and introduce our teams and our players. Starting up for team one in the southwest, ending with team two in the northeast. Starting off with Team 1 Southeastern player, then kind of going nice little clockwise manner. We have in Tropical Ocean Blue, Team 1's Odvanchik. Odvanchik? Odvanchik? I think that's how you say his name. Possibly. No idea. He is a Seraphim for this match as a 900. Probably call him Odu for short. To his northwest, we have in Orange the Color Orange Scorpy as a UEF as a 1700. And next door to him, we have in Stitch Blue, the Seraphim player, Barhan. He is a 1900. He is the highest rated player on Team 1 and in the game overall. And he's playing as a Seraphim for this match in the regular slot here for Team 1. In Batman Gray is Gib80. He is a UEF as a 1700. In Ruby Red to his north, we have the 1100 player of Alchemical. He is an Aeon for this match as an 1100. And rounding out Team 1's lineup, we have in Pat, not Batman, but Barbie Pink, Zerby 7. He is a, a Cybern for this match as a 1300. For some reason, my brain really wants to say Pac Man there for some reason. So, for Team 1's side of the map, they have one of each of the factions with two UEF and two Seraphim. Starting off with Team 2 Southeastern player, then working our way counterclockwise around their lineup, we have in Imperial Gray, Razana. He is a Cybern for this match as a 1300. To his north, we have in Amethyst Purple the Aeon play of Ninra. He is in Amethyst Purple again as a 1300. To his rest in Rust, we have the Cybern player of Colonel Kenny Lee. He is an 1800. He is the highest rated player on Team 2. In the regard to slot here for Team 2, we have as a UEF Electrician. He is in Chevy Crimson as a 1600. In Snow White to his west is another Cyber for Team 2. It is Index Librorium. I'm going to call him Index for short. He is a 1600. And rounding out Team 2's lineup in, in lightish red pink is the 1200 player of Frost Monster. He's not playing in Snow White. He's playing in lightish red pink. Definitely a different color scheme he's going for, at least for this game. He is an Aeon for this match. So for Team 2's side of the map. And there were two Aeons, two Cybrans, uh, uh, three Cybrans, excuse me, and one UEF, which means Team 2 lacks Seraphim tech. Team 1 has all of the factions represented on their side of the map. And for these 12 players on the map, let's take a look at what you come they have to scoop up. Currently sitting at, drumroll please, 21,000 mass in reclaim, making it about 1.75k mass per player, doing easy, not really easy math in my head, just doing some rounding. And no real exact calculations, just saying a roughly middle number between 1500 and 2K. In terms of the mixes in this game, let's take a look at Team 2 side of the map. There's a Quad Mix position right in front of Razanan to the south there. There's a Tramex position in the middle and a Quad in front of Index. There is a Trimax position in the northwest. That's going to be a very tight situation because we already see Zerbi is sending forces northward for him to grab that corner of the map. There isn't anything really in the back line in terms of a big grouping of mexes, and there's nothing realistically in the exact middle, especially with these nice little twin mountains in the middle of the map as well. There are tiny little ponds in the four corners of the map, so players can hide their comms back there, which I expect to see at least one from each team hiding their comm somewhere on the map. We do see a couple of units heads breach the front doors here from Scorpy into Team 2's Ninra's base. Nice little Selen. And actually, that's not Selen. Excuse me. That's a Mechmarine and a Snoop inbound. But unfortunately, there is an Aurora inbound, and uh, that's not really going to help keep those units online, especially with that range advantage on the Aurora. If they can actually hit the shot, there we go. Able to hit it, and then we'll deal with that unit after that. And it's shaping up to be roughly a 2v2 in the northwest here between. Team 2's Frost Monster and Index versus Zerbi and Alchemical. We do see in the middle, nothing really is happening right now besides a couple of units kind of shifting their way northward. It's at least a 1v1, but there's no direct confrontation. Confrontation. There we go. 
And they can either go, of course, this kind of counterclockwise or clockwise manner around those twin mountains. And in the southeast, it is a 2v2 as well with, I think, the rearguard airsoft players. At least one of them moving for Team 1. Looks like he's going to the middle. And Team 2's rearguard airsoft player, Electrician, kind of hanging back for now. We do see some gunman upgrades have been started for Team 2's index and... Frost going to go for speed first, then gun range, maybe? Maybe, maybe not. But of course, speed and range is on board here for Index in his position. Zerby's not going to get there in time to really stop that upgrade. It's already at 40%. So realistically, there's no way, unless he just increases his speed by a ton, to get there. Gun range has been started for our chemical in the back. So Team 2 will have a slight advantage. And yes, that gun upgrade has been started for Frost as well. Gun spinning range has been started in the southeast here for Razanan. And again, there are three players on Team 2 going for gun upgrades. So far, nobody else has started an upgrade as I've seen. Colonel Kenny Lee in the middle and Ninra. We could see maybe a sensor package upgrade for one of these Aeon. I wouldn't be surprised to see that because it does offer a ton of vision, especially early to mid. Late game, it's not as effective just because being that far forward can be really dangerous. But again... Early to mid is very nice to have that uh, just constant vision around your comm. Odu moving in on a couple of these Mantis hanging out on that nice little upper section of the map. These Nexus for him are going to get wiped out, unfortunately, and he will spot that on his radar system. We do see him sending a nice attack straight forward, but it's not really going to go anywhere, and only what it will do is just put a little bit of reclaim in this section of the map. Gun speed range has been started for Zerby. And mm, maybe Index will stop the upgrade. We do see some engineers coming in to assist. It's already at 50% now. Maybe Index will get there in time to do a little bit of calm damage, but I don't think that's really going to deter Zerby from stopping that upgrade. We do see Frost Monsters inbound, but Gun Advanced Range coming online for Alchemical. And this will definitely help his team keep this side of the map relatively contained. That gun upgrade does finish. And Zerby is in full retreat. Index trying to catch up and continuously bombard that commander. Guadmex position in the northwest here has been knocked out for Zerby, and he's going to have to be forced to retreat. Team 2 just has a slight advantage with a 2v1 comm near the front line. But, of course, that all advanced range is coming in for Alchemical here shortly. So he'll be able to at least be able to attack at range and not be shot at, at least initially. We do see gun spinning range has been started for Bahan in the middle. And the main leaderboards in terms of the players, that being Bahan for Team 1 and Colonel Kenny Lee for Team 2, aren't really engaging one another. They're being very standoffish, which is either a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how you want to look at it. Good thing because it gives them more time to eco, gives them more time to kind of take this game a little bit more slower. Bad thing is, is they don't know what the other one is doing. So it's just one of those things where intel is going to be very, very important. T2, of course, is now online for Kenny. And, of course, he's getting his engineers to get his T2 P gens online. Army says index to the west. And there is a decent amount of uh, just run-by attempts going on here for both teams. But it doesn't look like this one's going to get too far. And a couple of interceptors are not going to feel good. But... These are going to get plugged very quickly. Uh, they might do maybe a T2 max kill, maybe. But there are forces moving in to intercept, and they are a Tham, so they should be able to catch up and be able to intercept those Mantis. But this has given a lot of room for Team 2 to claim the northwestern corner of the map, and they actually have, I'd say, about a good 25% if you're going from top to bottom of the entirety of the map under their control. We are seeing in the southeast Team 2's Razahan pushing in against... Odu, Odu has no upgrades on board. Razanan has stealth and gun on board. So he's going to be at a significant disadvantage. We do see the comm of Scorpy has a nice little TMD online. Didn't go any, you know, since the launching of the missiles. Just wanted to protect his back line as well as, of course, protect himself. Gib holding position. Just sent his comm forward and it just kind of kept it there for a while. He is moving it a little bit. Looks like he's moving in to assist the southeastern front. We do see that Odu is now suffering a decent amount of hit point losses from all of these Aurora, but Zanana is not focusing on him. He's focusing on all these units to the west inbound from Scorpy. 
the Scorpion came in with those forces to try to just relieve that position. We are seeing some Ilshis now emerge here, so Odu does have some reinforcements inbound, but only one Ilshi isn't going to do that much. It could help at least dissuade maybe Razahan from continuing to engage, but I don't know. With the discrepancy in the hit points remaining, 5,000 versus 8,500, especially with that rank in veterancy, uh, he's probably going to be a little bit more aggressive in his stance, especially with Ninra with this T2 upgrade pushing in with a couple of PD emplacements. In the west, we do see Alchemical trying to hold off this attack from Frost Monster, and Zerbi has fallen into the low yellow. Same here with Alchemical. Almost one veterancy for him, and Zerbi at one veterancy. Now we see Bahan has started to push him with his gun upgrade. Colonel Kenny Lee getting some more T2 engineers. Probably going to build some PD to try to defend. Has a couple of T2 units online, but that isn't going to stop a gun comm, at least this early in the game. Ten minutes on the clock here. Team 1 to Team 2 in terms of the mass income here. It's a little bit in favor of Team 2, but not by a whole bunch. I'd say about 20 to 10 on average of, you know, constant reclaim or whatever the case may be, upgrades, PGen issues. So there's really no significant advantage to really say, well, Team 2 is going to run away with it for now kind of thing. We are seeing Nano Repair being built on Razahan's commander. He's still putting a lot of pressure on the southeastern side, but we are seeing that this position has not been at least reconquered, but not necessarily reclaimed so far for Odu. Stealth coming online here in the west for Zerbi. That's... I mean, there's only T1 forces. Not that he would know that entirely. It's a little dangerous to be that far forward, but he is getting some PD online, so not really too bad now, especially with T1 forces, those... Cerberus Tickle Cannons are definitely up to the cast there. We do see Bahan starting to walk down Index. Index going to get underneath the surface of the water, and that water is just deep enough so that... Whoa, hello! I think I think I caught that, but it looked like that Overcharge was going to go for the comm. Couldn't target the comm, and instead swung north and hit a Rhino. I don't know if it's because of comm was going to target the Rhino. That's why it did that really weird swerve there. But that looked like it was going to hit the land, so... He must have been a little bit lucky there that his overcharge. Not that one overcharge makes a difference. It can, but usually it doesn't. We do see with the hole that opened up from Bahan's forces pushing in, he has created a little bit of an opportunity, but there are a lot of T1 units closed on the gap. There's a couple of Rhinos, but not really that worried there for Bahan. He's just going to sandwich him and call it a day. We do see that forces inbound from Index have fallen back to secure the commander's position. Stuff coming on the way for him. And we do see that Nano Repair is almost done here for Razana. And we do see Odo is still on the front lines without an upgrade, without veterancy. Really needs to get those upgrades cooking, especially if he wants to keep that commander on the front lines for the next, let's say, five or so minutes because T3 might be on the cards here shortly for a couple of these players. T2 is, of course, being the main stage unit for now. Missile outbound from Team 2. Going to strike that. Oh. It does hit the T2 max. Doesn't actually kill it, but it does hit the T2 max. Takes out a couple of those mass storages. Tactical missile launcher number four that can hold four attack missiles. Oh, it fires and it hits the mountain. Oh, that's going to suck. Missile is outbound going for a T1 max. I mean, it's two mass a second. That's something. Oh, no. Uh, actually, that's the next shot. Excuse me. The first shot's inbound for that T1 max right there. We do see that Alchemical with that advanced range able to create a nice little buffer zone between himself and everything else on Team 2. But now we see the battle lines have pretty much reformed to what they used to be about 10 minutes, uh, about 8 minutes ago. We do see that Zerbi's pushing him with his stealth and gun comm against this against mainly T1 force. All these Aurora are going to just be blapped away by that gun from Zerbi. And we see it's a two shot. And we do see Frost Monster moving into intercept, trying to get a sight on that command. Of course, the stealth makes it so that the radar can't pick him up until something on Team 2 can spot him. And then cloaking is a whole other thing. Nano repair almost done here for Index. He's already back up in the green, to be fair, but he's almost at full health, so he's definitely going to appreciate that advance. Not advance, but the regular region on board. We do see transport inbound with a couple of bricks, so Colonel Kenny Lee has T3 online using a UEF transport, which means that he got that 
gifted over from probably his uh, regular dice up player of electrician. And that's going for the main position here for Pahan. This is a great drop. There's only a Tham nearby. It's going to get spotted most likely, and it does get pinged. That's a great grab here. T2PD trying to be hurriedly built. T2 Mex, I think that was almost upgraded to T3. That is taken out. That was the Mex that was shot at earlier. The engineer is trying to get that other T2PD. If they get the second one, it's going to be close. It's going to be close, but a couple more Mexes are going to suffer still. So that's going to be a huge grab nonetheless here by Colonel Kenny Lee. Nice dropping there. We do see Calm on Calm action here to the north. Index still trying to just barrel stuff. Alchemicals Calm. Obsidian. Heavy tanks coming in. Love to see it. They are tanks. They are heavy. They are annoying to deal with with that shield on board. 1,500 hit points. More hit points than their actual, like, whole hit points. If I am correct, in terms of units, in terms of offensive units, that is the most shields or most uh, quantity of shields on board any unit. Because I think the Harbinger has 1,000 and the Titan has 750. I don't count the parashields because they're more of a defensive utility unit rather than offensive unit. A chemical still being shot at. Of course, that stealth upgrade not really playing well to our chemicals' advanced range because, of course, this is what he can. Oh, that's team two. Excuse me, that's team one. Commander this is what he can attack. see. So we can't actually see the commander from index. So he has to be very careful to keep him in his sights at all times. So that's actually really a nice counter to. The advanced range upgrade on board the Aeon side of things, but of course, a Omni station will definitely cite that in very easily. There's no way that uh, Cyber Commander is going to hide, unless he's outside of the Omni range, and that's a whole other thing. We do see Gib pushing in. He still has no. Uh, actually, excuse me, he has gun on board. Almost that one star veteran scene. Nimmer trying to get a little bit of wall section to protect himself. Missile launchers to the max inbound from. Scorpy, look at this. The shields just cannot hold TMD coming online, but there's so many missiles. They can only distract so much. I think the missiles do break through targeting those TMD. But they can grab multiple of them. I think their max is three, if I'm mistaken. And now if there were spearheads in this mix from Scorpy, that'd be a done deal. There's so many missiles launching from those things. There's really no contest. But you see some ASFs inbound from Gib going after the gunships that were trying to assist the southeastern side for Electrician, and those get wiped out. Nice grab there from Team 1. But we do see those bricks still causing some havoc over here. If not, uh, maybe those are different bricks. But look at this. All these mixes with Bahan are down. Looks like they did go north. There are more bricks inbound here from Colonel Kenny Lee. He's really just throwing just a couple of units this way, a couple of units this way. He's really stretching Team 1 very thin. And while Bahan goes west to deal with those, he now has to deal with these units over here. There is a T2 PD emplacement. There is a nice little bouncer that, is, oh, doesn't get wiped out. But there are some Ilshis inbound, so they'll try to help as much as possible. But that's another set of mechs is down. So Bahan has lost... Seven, eight mech, uh, two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mexes now. That's a huge chunk of his eco. He's down to 21 mass per second. That is rough, especially at almost the 20 minute stage of the game. Being that far back can be devastating. You can see that reflected in the mass income. Team two at 800, team one at 720, primarily due to that one attack or one series of attacks. We do see in the north still that constant Cybern V Aeon commander just duking it out. We do see the uh, Obsidian PD, sorry, Obsidian PD, the Obsidian tanks coming in to try to again keep that calm in sights. Of course, Index will go back into the pond and hide himself from any sort of target priority or target sighting in whatever the target, what would those be called? Target, not target priorities. What would those be called? Target lock? Ah, uh, target lock. That's probably the word that I want to use. Because you can still ground fire stuff, but that's not a target lock thing. That's more of a, you can just fire at something. But you see Frost Monster pushing in with his commander. He has the gun, advanced range, and is that the, that's not the chrono dampener, is it? What is that middle upgrade? I forget what, because I hardly ever see this one. What is it? It is the, it is the chrono dampener. Very interesting to see that, and I think it's the Crimson Ring, I think is the uh, 
range on that. It might be the red one. I might be mistaken on that, but I think it's at, it's at least the Chevy Crimson Ring at a minimum. But that could be the Omni, too, so don't quote me on that. And if anybody does know 100%, please let me know down in the comments. I love to be corrected on things only because it then makes me better at knowing what is what and what is not what, and that way I can have a better quality cast for each and every single one of you. Speaking of comments, almost 20 minutes on the clock here. Team 1, that discrepancy is still about the same. We do see that Bahan's getting a little bit you know, higher up in the count for mass income, but Team 1 is lagging behind 875 versus 970, so we'll call it about 100 mass in favor of Team 2. Nobody has died yet as of 19 minutes and 20 minutes, we'll say, on the clock. So no one died before 20 minutes. Love to see it. And let me know down in the comments, of course, what you like about the cast, what you don't like about the cast, what I'm doing right, what I'm doing wrong, that sort of thing. What? Just let me know how you feel. I really do appreciate it. And, of course, if you haven't done so already, please share this video with anyone, everyone, and most importantly, your pets. As we see this nice just run down from this western side inbound, from Frost Monster, that might have been a distraction sending in his comment to allow the forces to move into the west and go straight south. We are seeing some loyalists move in. Very good unit to deal with missiles, of course. And they also have the EMP weapons on board. So they can kind of just stall out an attack if there's enough of them. A couple of these loyalists will go down, but you can see even if you have shields, even if you have 10,000 damage per second, if you get stun locked, that's game over. There's really no coming back from that, and that is a nice uh, reaction by Zerbi getting those Loyalists online. He probably had some stacking up already, but he's able to get more online to deal with this. Maybe a one max, two maxes maybe will go down. But it's going to be close. There is a reward trying to take out that other max, and it looks like it might actually take it out. Oh, sitting at 420. It's only 40 damage per hit. And yeah, it looks like that max will slowly lose its hit points. And I don't think Zerbi sees it, so that will be a nice claim there. We'll see if that Aurora gets another mech kill. A great job of that mech just sitting there and getting a nice little, you know, nine mass a second wiped off the board for Zerbi. Firebase boys have now fully emerged and begun and entrenched here. T3 artillery units from the Dismolisher side of things coming in to counteract the TMD. Shields are online, but they're slowly falling. And some of them are now offline. And that's a lot of damage. We do see some sniper bots trying to counteract that uh, artillery piece. But well, that uh, is not looking good. Shields are down. The emitters are down. There's a nice little T2 artillery installation. And Colonel Kennedy, being a cyber, and builds the first experimental of the game at 22 minutes almost on the dot. And it is a monkey. If it was a crab, I would be astounded. Because that monkey is, of course, the cheapest experimental in the game. We do see the attack has now occurred, and it doesn't look like Scorpion has enough direct fire weapons to deal with this. There are a couple of PD being built, and Triads as well back further into the base. But Ninra's Calm is pushing in. He has T2 on board, so he doesn't have a lot of offensive upgrades. He just wants to do as much damage as he can. Overcharge comes in, taking out some TMD. The Dismolishers and the uh, Flapjack missile launchers definitely should be the main targets but there are of course a couple of pillars in there as well there's really no it's going to be kind of even with the demolishers focusing the fire base here for Ninra we do see lots of mech marines being spammed out to try to deal with the incoming Aurora and they might be going after the comm itself as well reclaiming actually no T1 PD being built nice placement there but of course the demolisher takes out most of the HP and kind of wipes it out anyways in the west we do see that this base gets completely wiped out by bricks so while team one zerbi holds the position for a while the bricks come in and wipe it out and it looks like team two is going very well here on the western side they haven't taken the front lines as of yet but they've done a significant blow to team one's player of Zerbi and he's pretty much not knocked out of the game but Odu as well he's not doing terribly in terms of eco as well he might be pa ah, that might be oh it's not power related but he has a decent amount of mixes online but looks like some of them have been knocked out and yeah team two's imperial great player of Razanon has claimed the southeastern corner so team two owns both of them and we lost Bahan in the middle due to all these bricks inbound from team two 
That's a nice, and the, and the monkey. The bricks and the monkey. So that was a great grab. The first player of the game eliminated is the highest rated player in the game overall. And Team One's, of course, uh, highest rated player. We do see Harmage is moving in to try to intercept that monkey load. ASFs, of course, have been building and gunships as well. I didn't mention when both teams got T3, but Zerbi is defeated by Frost Monster. And now Team One loses a second player. And that's just due to all the pressure inbound from the Northwest. Of course, he didn't really have a lot left anyways. So he was kind of just stuck where he didn't have enough mass to produce more units. So he just had what he had. And then at some point, he just crumbled under the weight of just not having enough at that point. A couple of flat cannons trying to save that Monkey Lord. But those hit points on board, those broadswords are tough to deal with, especially sitting at two star veterancy. Now at 7,200 hit points, they get 600 per veterancy which means they can set up to 9,000 at five star. It's a decent chunk of hit points for a T3 gunship. What do you see now the, the death of Zerbi? Team two's alchem sorry, Team 1's alchemical. See, knew I would do it at some point. Has now taken over business of the Western Guard. We do see that the rear guard is up player of Gibb is not taking the middle base here from Bahan. So he's in charge of the middle, and then the other two players on Team 1 in charge of the eastern flank. We do see these gunships doing very well, but there's a lot of mass extractors taken offline. Of course, the Core 6 over here, plus the quad, plus a couple of dotted mexes, plus another trimex in the middle once again. Team 1 just is not catching a break. Look at this discrepancy now. Team 1, 1.1. Team 2, 1.6k mass income. 25 minutes. With that huge discrepancy, Team 2 could easily just sit back, relax, eco a little bit more, go for artillery, go for game enders, go for nukes, go for whatever they want to go for. I'm not saying the game would be theirs entirely, but they have a huge advantage at the disposal. It just depends on how they use it. We'll determine if they win 10 minutes from now, 30 minutes from now, or they don't win at all. It could just not even matter. Because mass is not the only thing that wins games. It is a huge factor, of course, but it is more about how you use what you have rather than how much you have. Lots of Titans trying to dodge some sniper and missile and PD shots. Ninra is retreating. And something about muting something going on. Oh, Zerbi, I think, talking about the fact that Alchemical didn't help out as much as he probably wanted him to. Galactic Colossus online for Alchemical. And if Team 2's... Okay, Frost Monster definitely sees it there. So he's like, nah, I'm good. I'm just going to go back home. It is, of course, way past snipe opportunity attempts. We've already seen two of them. But they weren't snipes. They were mainly just front lines collapsing in on top of one another. So most of these players we see are at least a little bit further back, especially with Ninra and Razahan, who's actually a five-star veterancy. And so he has a lot of hit points, but you can just sit back, relax, get underneath the shield... Sip some Mai Tais, hang out, watch the uh, fun go. Give base if you're going to give up, says. Let me stretch this out a little bit. It says Colonel Kim Lee to his allies, talking to Frost Monster. I don't think he's giving up. He's just retreating in my perspective. He's like, hey, I know the Colossus is there. I don't want to die. So there's that Dodge GC. Well, the DC, I mean, it does have 99,999 hit points. So there's a lot of hit points. And all the harbingers coming in aren't going to help that situation out. Gunships coming in. Team 1, that's the one big thing going for them is they have the air power. ASFs are inbound. Well, I know what they're going for. And they're going for those gunships. And those ASF will collide pretty much for the first time of the game, at least that I've noticed, 27 minutes and 40 seconds. The ASS from Team 2 focused the gunship from Team 1, but it will give Team 1 a little bit more ASFs, but actually a lot of those gunships, because they've been vetted off a little bit or vetted up a little bit, they survive most of the damage, and definitely some gunships were wiped out. But that is a huge win. Team 1 has air control, at least at a minimum, at least a little bit, and they have... A little bit of gunships. We do see that this chicken is being swarmed by bricks. And this is Team 1's territory. This engagement usually happens up over here. But this just goes to the fact that Colonel Kennedy is not letting off the gas. He's just sending units in constantly. And this chicken is going to be just bullied to death. Look at this thing. Look, <laughs> Yeah, that's, that's what I'm talking about. Colonel <laughs> Kennedy is just laughing at this. This is surprising. And that is a nice win here. Of course, the mass will be on Team 1. So this is when you know issue with that 
We even see a couple of other units for Colonel Kennedy down here. So it looks like at some point he sent units down this way. And yeah, there are more units down here. And we see a lots of drones being taken out by these bouncers. Ooh, that's got to hurt. That's a lot of build power that has to be rebuilt. And that's, of course, eight, sorry, six mass per second per engineer. That adds up after a while. That is rough. That's got to hurt. Ooh. That wife mixes how to that side. We were just talking about how those mixes were wiped up. But now there's T3 mixes that are replacing them, getting ringed as we speak. But look at this pressure from this Colossus. It's really relieved a lot of the damage that's been done to Team 1. Team 2 still hasn't lost a player yet. And this Colossus might be the death of one of them. Frost Monster essentially locked into his base. He's almost has a Colossus of his own online. But a nuke is online for Team 1's Baham. And not only is it online, it is loaded. And it is inbound. Is there an SMD? No, there's no. Oh, there's another nuke. And it's coming online for Team 2's Colonel Kenny Lee. But that thing is not going to build. And that Colossus is taken out by the Laser Cloak and Commander of Index. Great job there he locks out that experimental gets the mass for himself air fight eh, it'll favor yeah, it'll be a little bit in favor of team one but heavy losses on team one here comes the nuke it's gonna land Ka boom oh there goes that nuke all those pgens all those mexes oof that is an oof right there oh look a t2 pgen still has some reclaim now i'd say about Six. Let's say 70,000 mass. Oh, no. That's 85,000 mass. Great, great, great nuke from Gibb. Not only did he take out a lot of mass, but he also took out a nuke that was, eh, I'd say, about half loaded. We'll give him half loaded just to make the you know perspective of there was still a little bit of time, but I think that's partly due to the fact that Bahan had dual base. Had he not, I think that nuke from Colonel Kennedy would have been built first. But, of course... Kenny Lee loses a lot of mechs income. He had six mechs, and of course, they were most of them were dual ranked. So that's 27 plus 8, 35 times 5, roughly. Like 150, 175 mass income. That's a chunk of mass. And that's dropped him to 125. And now you can see that discrepancy now back to about 200 mass in favor of Stealth Team 2. Another Colossus is online. Laser's going to come and do even more damage. And that Colossus from Team 1 is uh, probably not going to survive unless the ground firing happens, which is focused on other things. Gunship's inbound to assist from an electrician. Nice. Oh, the power goes out just for a brief moment. And Index is like, oh, oh, no, I'm fine. I'm fine. And kills another Colossus. That's two kills on the experimental side of things for him. He's making great use of that cloaking and laser. 52,000 mass killed. He's getting up to where that nuke from Team 1 has killed off mass. Now we see a fat boy online here from Scorpio. We saw it being built earlier on. Doesn't look like we're seeing any uh, another fat boy be built. Shields are coming online here for Odu. Odu's still holding in there. And he's claimed the southeastern corner once again. Of course, the fat boy's helping out a little bit with that. Razahan pushing in 11,000 mass killed with him. But, of course, he doesn't have the cloaking and laser that his teammate of Index has to the northwest. So very dangerous to push in, especially with fat boys. Once those fat boys notice him, that's a dead calm. He just has to be very careful of how far he pushes in. Large group of bricks and AA to the north for Index. He wants to make sure he's protected at all costs. And a third Colossus has come online for Alchemical. And that one's being bullied now. Both Team 1 and Team 2 have air players in the UEF tech. So they have the best air-to-ground weapons in terms of their gunships available in this game. In the bar, bar T4. Don't count those. Don't count those. <laughs> In the north, we see a couple of missile launchers going after a couple of PD. Eh, it'll open the door a little bit, but there's really nothing worrisome about that, especially at 32 minutes. Team 2 has still not lost a player, so at least on Team 2's side of the map, no one has died on their side of the map, which, again, it is a statistical unlikelihood that that happens. But I have seen more and more games where players don't die as quickly as other games I've seen where it's you know, 10 minutes somebody dies, 15 minutes somebody dies, 20 minutes somebody dies, 25 minutes somebody dies. 
three experimentals, two of them chickens, another Colossus, and there's a crab on the other side of this pond. And that com of index is probably going to be targeted. Oh, he's going to get a little bit of AoE. Yeah, he'll receive a little bit of damage, but I don't think it was on purpose. It was probably by accident or it was uh, essentially directed or whatever, uh, coordinated, whatever the case want to be. Two Colossus. And a third one, inbound Monkey Lord. Crab, lots of experimentals. All we're missing is a Fat Boy and a Monkey. And we have all, actually, we're only missing a Fat Boy. And we have all the experimentals on screen. Love to see that. There is, of course, all of them built at the same point. But uh, we don't see them all on screen. Unfortunate. Even the draw distance, it's just not enough to get that Fat Boy on screen. Chicken pushing in. First Colossus is down. First Colossus is almost down here for Team 1. Crab is coming in. It's staying, it's staying a little bit in the water so it can back up a little bit and hide. Second Colossus is down. This chicken has just decided to just kamikaze on top of this Colossus that's inbound. Looks like it's going to continue to go north. Index has been like, nope, I'm good. I'm just not going to engage. Ionstone will activate. Bricks are getting the heck out of dodge. And now this Colossus is now still in range of that Ion Storm and uh, almost kills off that often, but the often's like, whew. That was close. Chicken coming in to give that crab a hug. And that chicken, the Ion Storm, even if this one underneath the surface of the water, it essentially just jumps to the top of it. So the crab would still be vulnerable. Another nuke is outbound. That's going to be a great nuke and probably the first kill for Team 1. That calm is not. Come! <laughs> oh yeah, that was. I mean, that was a pretty close clip. That's uh, you can see that's really rough. Yeah, that was a great nuke there. I mean, it was it was close. It was very close. Had he gone north, he would have been fine. But because he went northeast, he was he was gone. Obviously, unfortunate. He couldn't have known which way the nuke was going unless he had spy planes or somebody else from his team looking at where the nuke was launched. Yeah, I will admit it is a little bit lame, but he was he did very well with that laser cloaking combo. B for come up, says Zerby. There is a monkey inbound, and that might be the death of Zerby. He's getting a chicken online, but it's not going to be built in time. Has a couple of optims. That's not going to stop a monkey lord. And this might be a death hit for Team 1. So it is a 4v5 game in favor of the Northeastern team of Team 2. And now we see multiple crabs coming in to intercept these Colossi that are inbound. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 Colossus Rex, 2 Chicken Rex. And that's where Bahan died. That's the crab from earlier that killed that last chicken. But 2v1, that's only going to go one way. Maybe this one will be knocked offline when these PD are done. But... That's not a chicken. You don't need to move it. Oh, it's actually going after the PD. That's probably a smarter play. Gunship's coming in. Oh, and that crab and bricks are inbound. Oh, that Colossus is going to get a little bit of entrancy, but not enough to get him over the hump. So, unfortunately, he will go down. He was going to go down anyways, but he would have lasted a little bit longer. Novak, shield your stuff. Team 1 has built a Novak's Fat Boy Fire coming in to assist with Odu. Odu looks like he got saved by a nice little SACU that came in to just take some of the brunt there. Satellites, two of them and more of them coming online. I like the shield there being first and the cloaking. Scatter shield, that way Team 2 has a little bit harder time of seeing it. That's what they can see. Definitely needs a lot more shielding, especially one right here, right here, right here, right here, all over the place. All the dots, those are all shields that need to be there. Every single one of them. That's how many shields. Actually, no, that's not enough shields. You need more shields than that. ASF fight happening once again in the mm, Midwest area of the map. Gunships coming in, taking out the Fat Boy. That's not going to feel good. ASFs might make it there in time. Looks like they will. And the ASF fight continues to happen. Gunships actually going to be the main target. ASFs get... Oh, no, they don't go all the way. Monkey Boy takes out this group of Mexes once again. So that's the second or even third time that Zerby's position... That's Technically, now no longer Zerbies. 
is taken offline. Monkey Lord, though, definitely worth the mass guild. 50,000 mass. Paid for itself and then some. And that's, of course, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 mixes times 27. 150 plus 10. Or, sorry, 12. 162 mass per second. That was definitely worth the cost. Team 2, 2K mass almost. Team 1, 1.5K. Two satellites are inbound. And if they're going after mexes, that'd be a good call. If not, they're going to go after PGENs. That's another great call. I do like the separation, oh, separation, the separating of the air grids. So you get one over here, one over here. So no cascade takes out the entirety. And, of course, the air headquarters is just priority off to itself. So it's not affected by any sort of cascade. Grabs coming to mind here for Colonel Kenny Lee. He's sitting on dual bases now. He's the only player on Team 2 sitting on dual bases due to the fact that Team 2 has only lost one player. Fat Boy is now shifted, of course, over here. That crab is going to be like, mm, we'll just take this reclaim and call it good, huh? Mm, just leave us alone. I mean, that's a lot of reclaim. We're currently sitting at, well, of course, it's not going to, oh, no, it'll show 235. How close can I get? I don't like how I can't zoom in all the way. But 230,000 mass on screen. I mean, that's going to shift over here. 140. 50,000 masters right there. Overall, 300,000. Majority of that mass is sitting on the western side of the map. Firmly in Team 2's control, but partially in Team 1's. Of course, there's a monkey boy down here. And a you know, nice little clump of mass there. We do see Odu pushing into the southeastern corner. And now the Fat Boys shoving their way forward. Unfortunately, those Miasma coming in and ripping apart those hit points on that Fat Boy. Sitting at 2-star veterancy, though, that Fat Boy. So... It didn't survive just because of the veterancy, but definitely didn't ha hurt. That's a nice bank of miasma. That's yeah, uh, not a great picture if you're rooting for Team 1's Fat Boys, is that thing is uh, deadly. We do see more bricks down the middle taking out another set of T2 mexes for Team 1. But it's going to just come down to how much is this going to be worth it at this point. Of course, 800 mass per wreck. Versus 600 mass per the Mex's loss. So a little bit in favor of Team 2. But, of course, mass per second. That's 9 mass per second. 27 mass per second. That's, you know, 27, 54, 108 after 4 set. Like, it adds up after a while. So it's not terrible to take out a couple of T3 Mex's if the units that you paid for are a little bit more than what you killed because it's all about how fast does your opponent respond to the damaged mixes smds are being targeted that's no surprise there pigeons taken offline though that's not great smd does get oh that's not great here for this base there's no backup smd and there's another satellite inbound does team one that's the most important question have a nuke loaded well if it isn't loaded now it's going to be loaded now, 113,000 mass killed, so two nukes, 50 plus thousand mass per nuke. Great average there. Love to see that. If that's not a launch there, I don't know what is. There is an SMD. It is loaded, though. It is currently being targeted. It has one shield offline. One of them is barely holding on. So unless there's more shield support here shortly, that is a dead SMD, and that's a dead base up there. Doesn't matter if an SMD is built immediately. Spy plane's coming in to try to see what's going on, but get denied. Those nice little blackbirds. They'll see something on Team 2. They might get a... Actually, they won't get a full picture. The SMD is down. Pigeons are going down. And that will be a nuke launch if it isn't already. Is it being launched? Is it being... No? you got to launch that thing. It is open for business. There is an SMD up... Oh, no, there's an SMD up there. Oh, there's no SMDs up here. That's not good for Team 2. Nuke still waiting to be launched. I'm going to keep an eye on it. If you want to do something, oh no, something's happening. Uh, Telebilly on this map is easy because of the pool. Oh, that would be very interesting, especially with all the satellites down here. PD being built to protect it as we speak, though. Looks like they're going to counter some Telemazer nonsense, but they're not. Nah, they need some TMD for sure, which I don't think they're, they're not building. So, Billy could be possible. It would be funny to see that, though, especially with two comps sitting in the water. T3 artillery, though, is online. And Team 1 has taken notice. They're going to target that immediately. Second one coming online here shortly. 
as much as I like the idea of just knocking out the artillery, it's better to take out the P-Gens because then you get a nice little cascade. You take out engineers. You take out other shields. Why, oh, why, oh, why do you need so many T2 air headquarters? Did you just do that by mistake? Why are there so many? Two, four, six, eight, nine. Why are there? Why? Why? Why are there ten of them? Why? The nuke, by the way, still has not been launched, and that SMD has still not been rebuilt. So the longer that goes on, it still gives Team 1 that open door. I mean, there's a lot of stuff can be knocked down. Not a lot of PGens, I will admit, in this mix. But there, of course, is the crab facility. There is a disruptor being built, though. That would be a nice target to take out. Maybe Gib is thinking about taking out the artillery position, which shields are starting to wane. There is an SMB here, which could easily be taken out, to be fair. And then the nuke could be going right on through. There is an SMB right there. And there's one right here, so it could get caught. Uh, maybe not that one. Those two for sure would definitely catch it, though. Looks like the artillery is raining in on the scatter shield and shield emplacement. A lot of the engineering drones assisting the shield. Now, there's only one emissary, so it's not terrible. Two. That's not great. There's the nuke launch. Where is it going? It's going for this base. I mean, that's a. it's still a main base to take out. I think this base would be a little bit better, in my opinion. But... At a bare minimum, a base is being taken out. A player most likely is being taken out if he doesn't move. I'd say right now. Yeah, he's uh, probably dead in the water at that point. Once he sees that nuke sailing over, if he notices, he's probably just going to accept his fate. Oh, uh, no, he's just going to accept his fate. Yeah, there he goes. Let's see where that nuke lands. Let's see if it's right in front of him. Uh, here it comes in from the north. Oh, that is a... Pretty much headshot. Kaboom. Oh, uh, that's a little bit further off. But still, that's a pretty close shot there from Team 1. That's another kill from that nuke launcher. So, so far, Team 2 has two kills. Team 1 has two kills. Those two nukes coming, kills coming from one nuke, that being that one. 196,000 mass kill with that nuke launcher. I mean, that's paid for itself. Just with the comm kills alone, let alone everything else they killed off. More shields being built. Love to see it. I do love the fact that we have one player building some PD that's going to get stopped by a nice little <laughs> shield being placed. And maybe we'll see that Billy Nuke inbound from Team 2's electrician. He does have the Billy Nuke. Is he going to go for it? Colonel Kenny Lee is just standing there like, do it. Just just teleport. Just do it. Just do it. I dare you. Do it. <laughs> Cyber just sitting there trying to egg on a, a UEF. In the West, Crab, Fish, is Colossus, and Chicken War. Unfortunately, I think the Crabs are going to lose this fight. One Colossus has already been felled and another Chicken as well. But once that Chicken from this one comes into range, we do see the Crabs are like, oh, you got to keep this Chicken moving at all costs. You cannot let these Crabs get out of range because that Chicken's going to do a lot of damage. This Crab's going to go offline. So it's now two Crabs and a Colossus versus a Chicken. Team 2 is going to win that fight, especially with a new Crab coming off of the assembly line. Lots of ASFs over the top taking out some gunships. Looks like they went after the fat boy and they didn't get it. There's two Colossi over here. Two Colossi moving into... Actually, no, three, excuse me. Wow, there's a lot of experimentals built in a short period of time. 2.2... Sorry, 2.0 for both teams. The chicken is down. The Colossus will be down. That's why I said that Ion Storm should have been kept walking. Gunships are inbound, and I know what they're targeting. Yep, there goes the crab. It's going to lose hit points very quickly. Artillery still raining in. The shields are starting to wane, which makes me think there's another artillery piece online. Nope, still just the one. Uh, where is the disruptor that's being built? Another air fight. Of course, that, oh, no, there is a disruptor. Okay, so there is two artillery pieces online. Team 1 wins their, that air fight most handedly. That's at least 100 or so ASFs in favor. Oh no, that's 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 air supremacy, air dominance, air whatever the heck I named the other words. There's air control, air dominance, air supremacy, and just I own the air. Maybe that's what I'll name it at last one. Is I just I own it. It's my air. Go away. This is my airspace. Goodbye. And that Colossus not really doing a lot of damage to anything. And now it's gonna die. Lots of reclaim for team one to scoop up, essentially echoing what happened over here earlier, but there's another huge reclaim. But Team One's going to grab that 
pretty easily, I imagine. There is a lot of Corsair stacking up. Chicken in this base here, inbound from Gib. And those Corsairs are um, ripping it to shreds. It's not going to get further in. That tiny little pond is not enough to hide that Colossus. So, I'm sorry, that chicken. So, that's not going to go anywhere. Another explosion happened. I don't. Oh, maybe it was an SACU or something. The new SAC is pushing left. Those are three crabs sitting there. There's two fat boys over here. Lots of PD being built by Scorpy. He's like, I'm just going to just do a bunch of Ravagers and call it a day. And he's just going to keep building them. I wouldn't be surprised to see more go this way. But those crabs are on the move. And they're going for Odu's base. I don't know if Team 1 notices this, but... Uh, oh, no. They notice something's going on over there. It looked like for a second the SACUs were just flying by themselves because I couldn't see the transport. But Odu's sending some SACUs in. I wonder what he put on board because Seraphim don't get Rascoms. So maybe Engineer presets? Maybe? There are some Authens pushing in. If Team 2's Ra Ra Razana is paying it. Oh, the transport's probably going to get knocked offline. Oh, no. There it goes. Oh, no. <laughs> that was such... Oh, oh that's, that's just got to hurt. I mean, it was about to land, most likely. Oh, that, that's not a missed opportunity. It's just so close. So close. Crabs have now engaged. But they're going single file, though. Which is not great because those fat boys are just going to rip them apart, you know, bit by bit. T1 PD engineers aggressively placing T1 PD. Probably one of the funniest things. And those bricks just wipe them out anyways. SAC is going offline. That's never good. But, of course, they were building PD. So there's only so much they could have done anyways. More of them over here. They should be building more PD. Flak not Sam says index. And here comes the S. Not the SSUs, but here comes the ASFs and the gunships over top. This could be devastating for Team 2's Air Force. And it looks like Electrician is going to go for the teleporter. He is going to do it. I mean, he has the power to do it for now. P-Gens. Oh, there's another couple of gunships inbound. That's going to be a nice taking out of that air grid. Will they get that other P-Gen? No. They won't grab that P-Gen. They take out that section of air grid. So both main air grids are down. Gunship's trying to go after the Disruptor, the second one at least that's being built, but there's just not enough. There's a lot of AA being built. Some Myrmidons just spammed up as fast as possible. They'll take out this grouping of Nexus. So Team 2's going to lose a lot of eco. They're sitting at both 2.5k mass income. Team 2 has two artillery pieces. Oh, sorry, three artillery pieces online. How are those? Uh, oh, well. Well, two of them are gone. Three of them remain. And we should see a Telebilly here in shortly. Teleport has been started here for Raza. Maybe he'll go for uh, the laser as well. It was inside cloaking, but that's not going to work. Bad boys have dealt with all of the crabs, and it looks like all of them almost died at the same spot. Percy's in the mix definitely helped out with that. Team 1 and Team 2 have sunk a lot of mass into experimentals that have all just died in the middle of the map. Bad boys pushing in with Colossi to support. And I should say Fat Boy, because there's only one of them over there. Looks like the artillery is trying to take out the air grid, which it has done a great job of doing. And that was probably a nice cascade to watch as well. Two comms sitting in the back of the map. He has no grid, and we just still lost air. Well, to be fair, you lost air only because there were just that many more ASF. 234 still online, so he owns the air. So... Unless you just had a metric ton of AA over the top, under them all the time. Not really going to do a whole lot. Oh, please tell me the artillery is going to get... Oh, it looks like the artillery actually took a bite out of that Air Force. That's what it kind of looked like. Maybe that's what I saw. Maybe the AA just came in, but that's what it definitely looked like. Yeah, that's what's trying to happen. Oh, one fire. Looks like the other one got through. P-Gens are going down. That's a dead Ninra commander, most likely. He's going to stand right next to that P-Gen. That's not going to feel good. And more P-Gens going to get knocked offline. Shields do come back online, though, just briefly. I'm waiting for that teleport to happen. Where is Electrician's Calm? No, he hasn't engaged yet. 
Satellites over top. Looks like they lost another one. No, there's still three of them. Yep, there's still three of them and more being, of course, rebuilt. Oh, there goes that P-Gen, which takes out the shields, which takes out the artillery piece. And I think this last artillery piece is not very really long for this world. It's barely covered the entire the of that shield, though. But they are T2. Oh, no. Yeah, they're T2, so they're not going to last super long. And they are trying to be... Nope, looks like it's just a... Can just be the end of it. I'm just waiting for that teleport to happen. I mean, an electrician talked about or at least uh, Colonel Kenny Lee talked about it. No, no, index said something. No, 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 index. Uh, that's not. Uh, you'll know most of them markers. Oh, it looks like somebody died, and Raza teleports directly into a PD bank and gets insta wiped. No, set me free, says Raza. He <laughs> lamp done. That's kind of funny, not going to lie, says Index. It, Alchemical was like, huh, that was weird. Anyway, let me just build this shield now. Oh, there he is. There he is. He's right next door. Oh, and there goes the Billy Nuke. It's inbound. Uh, and he's going to teleport away. It would be really funny if he just struck his own position. Another chunk of the air grid is down. Unfortunately, it's definitely shielded up, and there is uh, no way that was going to break through. It's going to impact the shielding, though. Not even take out the full you know, shield strength on any of those. And there he goes. I hear an Awasaw bomber somewhere. At least that's what I think I hear. Oh, yep. There it is. It's over there. It's like I heard I heard the tone from the bomb. I was like, I know it's somewhere. Where is it? And now it looks like Team 1 just turned this game on its head. They were looking not great. And it looks like somebody noticed. Like, hey, get him. He's right there. Go get him. Get him. See ya, bye. <laughs> Perhaps we recall, says Index. Bomber inbound takes out the remaining amount of structures around that core mass. Bomber does get taken out by the AA, though. But that doesn't matter at this point. Team 2, they're not looking great, especially on this northern half. The air grid got wiped out but is now rebuilt. Team 1's air grid is severely diminished. Ninra control case. He's like, I'm done. See you. Bye. His artillery was knocked offline a couple minutes ago. There are... Well, this disruptor looks like it just got taken offline. This one is the new one. Yeah, it looks like that one got taken offline just briefly by those satellites. But there's four Fat Boys inbound. And now we have Fat Boys meeting Fat Boys and shooting at the same target in the middle of them. Not gonna lie, this is not uh, looking good for Team 2. T2 air facilities. Why? Nope, that one's gone. Okay, there's one less in the world. PGENs definitely should be priority. This is a situation in which the shields are down. You'd get a lot of damage from the volatile explosions. You'd knock the shield offline, pretty much take out the artillery in the process. And all the engineers trying to keep at least the shield and the artillery piece alive. Just one of those things. Southeastern side has collapsed. There's nothing defending Team 2 at this point. Nothing wrong with Control K and the comms lads. I think Index is done with the match. And I hear Explosion. There goes Colonel Kenny Lee. He's done with the game. Will Electrician do anything? Maybe, maybe not. It is now a 4v1 game. 54 minutes on the clock. That one nuke was pretty solid. Yep. Yeah, that was definitely really, really... And then the other one, too. Yeah, the other one was definitely good. It wasn't as good as that first one, though. That was a really, really good nuke. I wiped three core mexes. Yeah, he did it three times. So that's how many times he did that set of mexes. And there go the two artillery pieces. Electrician doesn't have much remaining as Fat Boys over here. Another bomber was built. There go the shields and everything else down there. Yeah, it was definitely an interesting game for sure. But that is the game here, folks. I mean, oh, I thought that was the oh, I thought that was the mark saying the game was over. Never mind. There it is. That's the mark I was looking for. Team 1 wins the game. 54 minutes and 58 minutes. Couldn't be 55 on the dot. But Team 1 wins the game. MVP. I mean, Gib 
those nukes, that was huge. I mean, Team 2 was winning on the Northwest, was winning on the Southeast. Those two, oh, well, that one nuke in particular, the fact that it clipped Index, I mean, he probably would have been fine. And the game may have proceeded roughly the same way had Index still been alive. But taking out that huge clump of the everything there was great. Taking out this base was also nice. Of course, it just relieved a lot of the pressure from this western side and gave Team 1 a lot of time to rebuild because we see, look at all these fat boys. So those are Colossi, six Colossi, seven fat boys. I think that one's under construction. Actually, that one's done, so six. Lots of fat boys running around. The southeastern side, not really as much happened down here. We saw that one monkey that almost took out Odoo, but he was saved. Well, at least he uh, was able to take it out before he died, essentially. And nothing really happened down here. You can see there's no calm deaths. There's some SACUs, calm death, calm death. Of course, calm death over here. Yeah, right there. But, I mean, that it just goes that way. Sometimes you have the mass and you win the game. Sometimes you have the mass and you don't win the game. And I'll see all of you in the next one.